This week on the show, we have Dr. Nina Cash, who was named one of seven winners for the upcoming 60th anniversary of the Sports Illustrated issue that will be released in May 2024. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding the energy of allowing and receiving. Why, if we keep trying to control every outcome, we don't allow the universe space to pour opportunities into our lives, as a hand that is clutched onto things does not have space to catch something new. The reality is, our ego is the part of our brains that tells us that we must control every aspect of our lives. Our ego fears giving up control, as giving up control means less power. But the reality is, there is only so much we can control in our lives. We can control how we react to things and our ability to create opportunities. But after our work is done, we must then place our faith in divine timing and let go. When we understand the flow of stepping into our receiving energy, we take the burden off ourselves and can place our faith in knowing that everything is unfolding for our greatest good. As the saying goes, the universe has the most beautiful plan for you. Allow it to unfold in divine timing. You cannot rush magic. Stay tuned coming up after the break and fast forward let's talk about your feature in sports illustrated uh i know you're going to be in their 60th anniversary edition so what does that mean for you being featured at 57 years young what does that mean for you oh my goodness that is such a great question so you know i remember distinctly uh, I was a senior in high school. It was in 1984 and Cheryl Teagues was on the cover. And I remember thinking to myself, God, this is such an iconic magazine, you know, wouldn't it be so cool <laughs> to yeah. be on the cover or in the magazine? That was 40 years ago. And there is no way that, you know, that little 17 year old girl, I mean, she, it was like a pipe dream, right? It was like pie in the sky. And then now, 40 years later, literally, I'm going to be in the magazine. It, it's it's a pinch me moment. It's like, am I in a dream? Like, what is happening? You know, it's like, yeah, it's, I it's crazy. It's Next up on the show, we have Dr. Nina Cash, who was named one of the seven winners for the upcoming 60th anniversary of the Sports Illustrated issue that will be released in May 2024. Dr. Nina Cash is breaking barriers by becoming this year's oldest winning model at 57 years old and is living proof that it's never too late to achieve your dreams. Nina, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I am fantastic and thank you for having me. This is a treat. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. We have a lot to talk about, including your feature in Sports Illustrated. But before we get into that, let's talk about some of your amazing accolades. I know that you completed your bachelor degree 10 years after high school, your master's 20 years later, and you also have your doctorate. So tell us the importance of academics for you. Well, you know, um, well, first I, ha I have to say this, um, and then I'll get into, you know, my doctor. So I, I believe the best classroom is the world and the best teacher is life experience, hands down. Um, one of the reasons why I went back to school um, and as a returning adult was because I saw the need for at least me in order to move up in the corporate world at the time when I earned my uh, undergraduate degree. Um, I needed that, right? In order yeah. to move up on that so-called career ladder. So then um, after that, I got it, you know, 20 years after high school. And then I started to get into higher education, not just corporate world, but higher education. And obviously being in a higher education, you need to have <laughs> those degrees, those yeah. general degrees. So that's when I went back and got my master's in negotiation, conflict resolution and peace building. Oh, and then nice. at the age of 50, I went back and got my doctorate and it, and it wow. took me five years, wow. but I, I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very impressive. I like the, the ring to Dr. Nina Cash. I think it sounds yeah. really, really good. Um, I know that you were a dean at a university. So tell mm -hmm. us about that experience and what did you learn about yourself during that time? Sure. So I was an associate dean. I need to make that uh, <laughs> distinction because of my colleagues who are dean and definitely earn that. Um, gosh, you know what? I, I learned so much um, when I was an associate dean. 
um, about being resilient, about being nimble and flexible, especially being an associate dean through through the pandemic. Uh, I, I know we all experienced the pandemic, but you know, try transitioning 29,000 students, 6,000 faculty and staff in a, a matter of three days to an online environment. Uh, so talk about <laughs> being flexible and nimble and being resilient. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, yeah, I was definitely thrown in the deep end, but we handled it, we did, we did. <laughs> And fast forward, let's talk about your future in Sports Illustrated. Uh, I know you're going to be in their 60th anniversary edition. So what does that mean for you being featured at 57 years young? What does that mean for you? Well, oh, my goodness. That is such a great question. So, you know, I remember distinctly uh, I was a senior in high school. It was 1984 and Cheryl Teagues was on the cover. And I remember thinking to myself, God, this is such an iconic magazine, you know, wouldn't it be so cool <laughs> to yeah. be on the cover or in the magazine? That was 40 years ago. And there was no way that, you know, that little 17 year old girl, I mean, she, it was like a pipe dream, right? It was like pie in the sky. And then now, 40 years later, literally, I'm going to be in the magazine. It, it's it's a pinch me moment. It's like, am I in a dream? Like, what is happening? You know, it's yeah, like, it's, I can, it's crazy. It's crazy. I good. can imagine. I can imagine. What made you apply for this? Because I feel like it's a pretty bold move to do that. So what, what kind of gave you the courage to just be like, I'm going to go for this? Uh, well, uh, so I grew up in a very uh, modest uh, Filipino Catholic military family, oh, wow. <laughs> and um, and so I was not one for uh, bikinis or anything like that. If anything, definitely a one piece. And my husband's Australian, and we hadn't been to Australia for about three years because of the pandemic. And so last year in December, we decided uh, to go visit our family. And of course, you know, whenever we go to Australia, we don't go for just a week. We go for about a month or so. And their December, okay, is their summertime where our December here in California is our winter time. So we went to Australia and I didn't bring a bathing suit. And my husband's like, you know, let's take a walk on the beach. And I said, well, I need to go get a bathing suit. So because it was their summer, when I went to the mall to buy a suit, all of the bathing suits that were in my size were sold out literally. I went to a bunch of places and the only thing that was left <laughs> in my size was a two-piece leopard bikini. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, okay, well, you know, I'll just buy it because my husband and I, when we walk on the beach, it's early in the morning, it's like six o'clock, so not, not a problem. So it was New Year's Day. My husband and I were at the beach, 6.30 in the morning. He's taking candid shots, taking some video. We're saying hi to our, our kids back home. And that evening, we are looking at our iPhone and we're, you know, scrolling through the pictures. And I'm like, hey, not bad for a 56 retired old lady here, you know? And he started talking and, and I said, you know what? I know Sports Illustrated. They have this, this search and I know Kathy Jacobs. She was 57 when she won, you know, two years ago. And you know what? I'm going to apply because I just retired and this could be an encore career for me kind of tongue in cheek in a way, but I thought, you know, why not? And then, oh my gosh, I got a call. I got an email that said I made it to the 24. And then I <laughs> got yeah. another email saying that I made the top 12 and another one, the seven, and then in the magazine. Wow. It was great. That's amazing. And you are breaking stereotypes by being one of the oldest models this year for Sports Illustrated. You know, I love the fact that you're inspiring women all over the world of all ages that anything is possible at any age. So, so tell us about some of the feedback you've had from women all around the world. You know, it's really encouraging and people have been, oh, just so sweet. Um, you know, they're saying, let's, you know, slay the gray. <laughs> That's what I've been mean. going for. I got my silver sisters there. Um, a lot of women, again, have DM'd me and they're saying that, you know, I, I thought I couldn't do X, Y, and Z, but now I'm going to do it because you really encouraged me um, that, you know what, time um, waits for no one and I might as well do it now. It's always yeah. right time, right? Yeah, absolutely. And just because you turn gray, I think, you know, history, especially in America, you, you turn gray and somehow gray equals, um, 
an elderly person, someone who is not sexy anymore, someone who is old, someone mm. who is retired, all these kind of negative yeah. connotations with gray. And so, you know, I, I am trying to flip that switch. Now I'm not the first one, right? I mean, you got Paulina Paraskova, Andy McDowell, you've got so many beautiful uh, people out in the world that are, have been going gray and just embracing it. But you know, if I could do this in sports illustrated and, and you know, um, encourage some ladies, I'm gonna do it. And I'm happy that MJ and so grateful that MJ and this uh, SI Swim family um, are giving me this opportunity to do so. So Yeah, I love the fact that you're embracing your age. You're not in denial about it and you're embracing it even with your gray hair and you look beautiful at any age, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> I wanna ask you, have you been always like that? Have you been always the type to embrace your age or was it something that came over time? Because I feel like, you know, people in their 20s and 30s Feel like they're old already so you know so it's no, like it's it's really funny but i'm the type of person that always like if i was say like uh 18 and a half i would just say oh i'm 19. i always yeah. made myself a year older <laughs> than what it was so i've always embraced my age because i strongly feel that you know growing old or maturing in age is a privilege and a gift yeah. that not many receive. Absolutely. So I love being my age because it means that I've lived life, that I have gained some knowledge and skills and some experiences that a 20 year old or when I was 20, I certainly didn't have. So I, I don't want to go back to my 20s, 30s, 40s. I, you know, I'm embracing my 50s. I look forward to my 60s. I always think that, you know what? The best moments of my life haven't even happened yet. So yeah. I don't think it's all good, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's 100%. You know, age is just a number, to be honest. It really is. And yes. as you said, uh, aging is a privilege, right? It's some, it's an opportunity some people don't have a chance to have. So exactly. you might as well embrace it, right? right. Yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> there is someone out there that's your age that is miserable. And then there's someone out there your age who's living life and thinks they're young and is living it up, right? <laughs> exactly. It's all in your mindset. Yeah. You know, what's wonderful is that um, there's a quote by Eleanor Roosevelt. You can only be offended if you allow yourself to. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can. And and it was really interesting. I, I really uh, try to see the, the glass half full and be an optimist. Both my parents were optimists and just were just gorgeous, lovely, kind human beings. Um, and I remember when I was working at the university, uh, one of the universities, um, I would come in and there was this one gentleman who said, do you always have to come in to work so happy? <laughs> I'm like, what's the alternative? I'm like, you know, it's so cool. I could choose my attitude. I'm not going to bring the baggage that I have from home or whatever I'm dealing with to work. You guys yeah. don't deserve that. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's two sides of the coin. You can be happy or you can be miserable. <laughs> Let's pick happy, right? Yeah, why not? <laughs> I want to talk about, you know, you call being in Sports Illustrated your encore career. So tell us about yeah. that, uh, that message. <laughs> yeah, well, I just think that, you know, back in the day, folks thought once you retired, you, you couldn't do anything else, you know, yeah. but I'm here yeah. to say, why not? I think yeah. sometimes yeah. people think if they don't have their passion job and they've had to work like this survival job for their whole life that they can't do anything after they retire. Tell you what, I had my survival job, but I'm grateful that my survival job working at the university and working in workforce development turned out to be a passion job too. Yeah. Um, but now I'm actually really doing my passion job. What I've always wanted to do is just, you know, model and act and meet people. And, you know, one of my dreams is to be on a talk show um, mm -hmm. and, and talk about different topics, you know, politics, education, um, pop culture, you name it. Um, I think at 57, I kind of, I look at Joy Behar on The View. Mm -hmm. And she was an educator. Ooh. She also uh, was a stand-up comedian. And then at the age of 55, I, yeah, I think it was the age of 55, she got on The View and was a talk yeah. show host. Oh. Wow. So I look at her, her different careers. I'm like, certainly, you know, we can yeah. all aspire to do that. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and speaking of dreams, I know that also one of your dreams is to be um, on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> and I'm a big fan of manifestation and putting it out there. Tell us about that dream for you. Yes. Yes. Okay, I love dancing. I've been dancing probably in my mom's tummy back in the day, right? <laughs> oh, and she was pregnant with me. But I come from a dancing family. We, we love dancing. You know, we're Filipino. My husband's a professional dancer. Um, I wasn't professionally trained like he was but I just look at how incredible those stars when they get on there and some of them you know have never danced before and some of them had had training but the whole process of learning you know these dances and then being able to showcase that and even if you mess up whatever how wonderful it is right to learn yeah. something and challenge yourself um and then I love music so I just think that would be so much fun I would I would love to do that Dancing with the it. Stars is one of my yeah. mom's absolute favorite shows, so I'm forced to watch it as well. <laughs> but I, I love it. I agree. People really grow. Some people, um, they come on the show not knowing how to dance, and by the end of it, they're experts. So They're experts. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned your mom's. Yeah. So it was my mom and dad's favorite show. Okay. So it would be a real highlight. Or they, they passed away. My mom passed away in 2010, and my dad passed away in 2013. So. Yeah, so you're. I'm sure you're, you're going to manifest this, and it's going to happen for you. So. I am. Yes. <laughs> I want to talk about how did you prepare for uh, Sports Illustrated, both mentally and physically, because you also have to have that mental preparation, right, to be confident and to go slay. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I part of it about the confidence I think comes with age, because I honestly believe that I would not have been able to handle it uh, when I was younger. Um, I would have been so self-conscious, the whole nine yards. Um, being that I'm 57 and certainly the pandemic brought forth to a lot of people, you know, like in your face, your mortality. And I have been given this gift of Sports Illustrated. So I said to myself, I'm going to embrace it all. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it all in. I, I am going to experience every moment because a lot of times what we do is we, you know, we do like a lot of people, you know, you get nervous, scared, and then you blank out. You do, yeah. the, you, you know, whatever you need to do, but then you can't remember anything because you're just like, you blank out. I really made sure that I was present in every single moment and it was magical. It was, it was just magical. Um, so in preparation, I was just, you know, psyching myself up and just getting super excited. I actually was on a job for a week prior to me having uh, to go on my shoot. So that was kind of good because I was kind of occupied. My, my brain was kind of occupied with this job that I was on. Yeah, um, uh, yeah it was magical and I, I loved every moment of it. Oh, I love that. I love that you said you were present and you soaked it all in because, yeah, as you said, sometimes it's easy to just be in your head and you don't remember, right? When you look back, you're like, what happened? But you were you were present yeah. and you were able to take it in. So I love that for you. <laughs> and I want to talk about some of your philanthropy work. I, I love that, that you're giving back and that's important to you. So tell us about some of the charities you're involved in. Sure. So, and thank you for asking that question because uh, these chari charities, I, I really love and I've been working with them for quite some time. Um, one of the um, nonprofits that I work with is um, Get Safe and they have been around for about 40 years and um, actually the executive director is also the founder. His name is Stuart Haskin and the mission of Get Safe in a nutshell is just to help um, people live um, safer lives through training and education. And we do all sorts of training. We um, we help with uh, survivors of violent crime. Uh, we also uh, speak to school districts and universities about um, you know recognizing student behavior that could potentially be dangerous. <laughs> you know, with gun violence and different things like that. Uh, one of the things that we did about oh, let's see, oh, almost about twenty five years ago. Um, the executive director and I, we created a training program for uh, the special education population where we help them uh, learn about personal safety and self-defense. And we also trained uh, SACO, which is the Sexual Assault Crisis Agency at the time, Long Beach. And I was a board member at the time. And so um, because we trained the special education population and SACA, when Saka received a phone call from a special ed student, um, 
they actually at the time believed the student. Let me take one step back. Previously, 30 years ago, when someone would call the hotline and didn't sound like a quote unquote normal person, they thought it was a prank call. So they would hang up, right? Yeah. So um, what we did was we trained SACA about when you hear a call that could be coming from someone who is special ed, stay on the line with them and ask the same questions you would any other person calling. Mm -hmm. And because of that, a special ed woman who we trained did call SACA. SACA listened and it turned out that they were able to catch the perpetrator and that perpetrator was tried and convicted. Wow. So we were very proud of that because Prior, there was no training for the special ed population, nor nor agencies or nonprofits like SACA in that regard. So I'm very proud about that. And we continue to do training like that. Wow, that's amazing. That's a big accomplishment. I mean, you're saving lives by, by being part of an organization like that. So we're going to link that information below for anyone that wants to get involved as well for our viewers, because I think giving back is very important. So I love that you're doing that. And, you know, I created my platform to inspire, to uplift and to be a beacon of light for anyone watching that anything is possible. So for anyone watching this that might feel maybe they're too old, maybe they're not talented enough or maybe they just don't feel good enough. Uh, to go after their dreams, what would you say to inspire and uplift them? I would say to embrace it all. I uh, uh, embrace the uncertainties, the fear of change, the growth, the challenges, the excitement, all of it, because all of those things are setting you up to be the best you can be, right? It, it, your destiny, if you will. And until you reach your destiny, keep clapping for others right yeah, yeah. keep clapping until it's your turn yeah okay and it's gonna happen just have the faith i love that and, and dr nina what else is in store for you what else are you working on this year or next year oh, 2024 yeah well i signed with a couple more agencies mm -hmm. uh in the united states which is great one in new york um i'm really excited about and then um so i'm looking forward to the magazine coming out <laughs> in may um also uh the swim show that's coming up i think it's in june of next year as well and then continuing with uh modeling and acting and then you know hopefully maybe getting on dancing with the stars yes <laughs> yes we're here for that yes <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen exactly. it's gonna happen <laughs> Nina, thank you so much for being on the show today. Congratulations on all your success. Congratulations on really being a beacon of light for people watching this too, because I feel that so often age is a constraint against us where really it's just a number and we should go after our dreams at any age because that's what life is meant to be lived, right? So Exactly. Well said. Well said. So I love that you're you're sending that message to people. So congratulations on all your success. We can't to see we can't wait to see what's in store for you for 2024 and to see the cover of Sports Illustrated in May 2024. It's going to be out, right? Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Very nice. Well, congratulations, Nina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live to YouTube and Facebook.